Today, tomorrow could be one big yawn. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance and Analytics. Welcome to this post, covering finance and problem news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, tomorrow the Fed will announce its next rate decision. If it's 75 basis points as expected by many in the market, we'll probably see little reaction, unless there are some trajectory changing comments in the post-announcement press conference. If they do go a full 1%, then that might change the market dynamics. But the takeaway is that everyone does expect rates to go up by an amount that prior to the last couple of months well, would have been shockingly large. Perhaps then, no surprise that on Tuesday Wall Street ended lower on the eve of the US Federal Reserve in recognition of the Fed's aspiration to quash inflation despite economic and market consequences. And by the way, the Bank for International Settlements, known as the Central Bankers, Central Bank waged on Monday to defend rate hikes in the US and elsewhere, saying even if they cause a recession, it's the right thing to do. Clearly, the risk is stacked towards exacerbating the slowdown into a hard landing. That is by far the biggest risk at the moment, and it increases with every rate rise into this slowing growth environment, said Will Rind, founder and CEO of Granite Shares. Remember that the benchmark S&P 500 index has dropped 19.1% so far this year as investors fear aggressive policy tightening measures by the Fed could tip the US economy into a recession. And it closed for the third straight session below 3,900 points. That's a level considered by technical analysts as a strong support for the index as more bad corporate news spilled out. Last week, we had a dire outlook from FedEx and this time it was repeated with the shares of Ford, which slumped 12.3%, the biggest one-day drop since 2011, after it flagged a bigger-than-expected $1 billion hit from inflation and pushed delivery of some vehicles to the fourth quarter due to part shortages. And rival General Motors also sank 5.6%. Meanwhile, in another sign of nerves around future corporate earnings, Nike fell 4.5% after the sportswear giant was downgraded by Barclays analysts to equal weight from overweight, citing volatility in the Chinese market due to pressures from COVID-related lockdowns in early September. And another apparel maker, Gap, closed 3.3% lower. It announced on Tuesday that it was going to eliminate about 500 corporate jobs, having withdrawn its annual forecast late last month due to an inventory glut and weak sales. The signal of weakening profits from many sectors shows that the markets have more downside risk ahead. Greg Bootle, head of US equity and derivative strategy at BNP Paribas, put it like this. We have seen some bellwethers talk about the pressures they're facing so we could see some margin compression and some softening in the top line numbers in the third quarter earnings. There are a lot of headwinds to prevent sustained rallies. It's hard to have price to earnings expansion while the Fed is tightening. In fact, the latest market expectation is at 17% a chance of a 100 basis point increase, if not 75 basis points, and a prediction for a terminal rate now sitting at 4.49% by March 2023. This exit point keeps rising as inflation becomes ever more embedded, and that means higher rates for longer. Now we will, of course, be looking at the updated economic projections and dot plot estimates for clues on policymakers' sense of the endpoint for rates and the outlook for unemployment, inflation and economic growth. And there was other bad news that came out ahead of the decision with a Commerce Department report showing that residential building permits among the more forward-looking housing indicators slipped by 10% to 1.517 million units. That's the lowest level since June 2020. Bond yields continued higher with benchmark US 10-year Treasury yields hitting 3.56%. That's its highest level since April 2011, while the closely watched yield curve between the 2 and the 10-year note inverted further with the 2-year at 3.9579. Remember that an inversion in this part of the yield curve is viewed as a reliable indicator that the recession will follow in 1-2 to two years. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 1.01% to 30,706. 
The S&P 500 fell 1.13% to 3,855, and the Nasdaq dropped 0.95% to 11,425. Tech was one of the relative outperforming sectors on the day, actually, just down 0.6% as Apple added two gains from a day earlier. Apple rose more than 1% after TF International Securities said that the higher margin iPhone 14 Pro models were attracting increasing demand that could help boost iPhone revenue and average selling price. But gold was moored in the mid-1,600 US dollar territory, falling for a fifth time in six days and ahead of Wednesday's interest rate decision by the Fed. The dollar rallied for a third time in four sessions, being the main catalyst for gold's weakness on bets that the Fed will raise by 75 basis points for a third time. The benchmark gold futures contract on the COMEX settled down $7 at $1,671 per ounce, and gold has lost about 4% over the past six sessions, and it's stuck in that 1,600 territory. And it only gained 0.4% on Friday after hitting a two and a half year low of 1,669 first. The spot price of bullion, which is more closely followed than futures by some traders, has slid even more. On Tuesday's trade, spot gold was down 0.6% to 1,665. And on Friday, it sank below 1,654. That's the lowest since April 2020. Gold's September swoon could get uglier if the inflation-fighting Fed decides not to blink at the risk of sending the economy into recession, said Ed Moyer and this the online trend platform on here. Fed Chair Powell's messaging will likely determine if gold gets crushed here. Gold will be in trouble if Powell is able to convince markets that not only will they remain aggressive with tightening, but they will hold rates even as the economic downturn worsens. Gold volatility will remain elevated post the FOMC, as prices will likely have a strong case for either a move towards $1,600 or above $1,700, he said. And of course, the Fed isn't the only one considering higher rates. Central bank policymakers in the UK, Switzerland and Japan will also meet during the week as the global fight against inflation intensifies. But it's worth noting that China left its benchmark lending rate unchanged on Tuesday as the world's second biggest oil user tried to balance sluggish economic growth against its weakening yuan currency. Where things will get interesting with regard to the Fed, is in the follow-up comments where the market tries to parse what this means for the Fed's policy decisions through to the rest of the year. Current betting is another 75 basis point hike next meeting, then a slowdown to 50 basis points each, with a target range topping out somewhere between 4 and 4.5%. With inflation much higher than expected in the last report, especially in areas like housing, the market expects continued hawkishness. Growth continues. Job growth is healthy, spending is still reasonably strong, and that recession that everybody expected has at least not shown up yet. While the Fed's higher rates policy is working as demand slows down, a soft landing is a real possibility. But the fact of the matter is that there are signs that inflation may be peaking as higher frequency housing data is softening. The real question for this Fed meeting is whether it notices and chooses to acknowledge those trends. If so, That could be interpreted as a surprise on the dovish side in its comments. But a strong 75 basis point for this meeting and a softer emphasis on data dependence for coming meetings is probably most likely. While this will still remain objectively a hawkish stance, it will likely be interpreted as more dovish compared with current expectations, which could be good for the market. One of the main drivers of continued inflation is expectations, which can, of course, become self-fulfilling prophecy. And expectations are still very hawkish, and the Fed can come out just as expected and still be more dovish than expected. That may limit the market downside from this meeting and just might provide some upside going forward. But then earnings expectations are falling, and the markets remain overvalued relative to the weaker economy. So that may pull markets further down. But I suspect, actually, the Fed theatre this time will be, well, a bit of a yawn, at least for now.
Now, if you're buying your home in Sydney's contentious market, you don't need to stand alone. This is the time you need to have Edwin Almeida from Ribbon Property Consultants standing alongside you. Buying a property is both challenging and adversarial. The vendor has a professional on their side. Emotions run high, price discovery and price transparency are hard to find, and then there's the wasted time and financial investments that you make. Edwin understands your needs, so why not engage a licensed professional to stand alongside you? With RPC, you know you have experience, knowledge, and master negotiators looking after your best interests. So shoot Ribbon an email at info at ribbonproperty.com.au and if you use the promo code DFAWTW slash Martin, you can get a 10% discount offer. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.